I'm Yashish reporting for First Updates Now on Behind the Bot. With me is Team 10355 Project Peacock with a very unique robot here at the Chicago Robotics Invitational. They have unique pager, motor, pager motors to vibrate their outtake into position, as well as a very unique linear rail drone and a TPU deposit that's on a 3D printed rail. Learn more with me on, on this robot on Behind the Bot. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. So to start up with your robot, let's talk about your drivetrain and how you track it and the software that you use during the match for it. Yeah, so our drivetrain is just a Mechanum drive. Uh, its final gear ratio is 10.1 to 1, so we're very fast. As we move around the field, we're using three-wheel odometry. Uh, Anthony, you can explain more of the software. Yeah, so we have the side side and then the forward backwards. We use all of them to make sure that um, we can be as accurate as possible. We learned that three-wheel odometry is much more precise than the two that we used last year. And the GoBuilda odometry pods are also a lot more precise than the Rev custom ones that we had last year. So we've been able to do a lot more uh, precision stuff with Autonomous. Um, that's been really nice. And then all of the different, uh, we have many different pathings in Autonomous just so that um, we can be as compatible as possible. Do you want to talk more about the kind of decision making process you had to decide what odometry pod you had to use between like GoBuilda and the rev coders that some teams may use? Yeah, so last year um, we used Looney Odo, which was the customized um, rev odometry. Um, we liked that and then we started to look outwards. Uh, originally, we were going to go with the Axon odometry pods, um, but because of the fact that those were never released, um, we had to go with the GoBuilda odometry pods. Um, there's a lot more ticks and everything, and so they're much more precise than the Rev ones, um, which is what we need to be able to have a much better autonomous. Um, and so that's just what we use to be able to uh, set up other robots ways and to be faster and whatnot. All right, let's move on to how your robot can score. So you have a surgical tubing intake with some boot wheels. Can you walk me more through that and like how it works? Yeah, sure. So um, we have a drop down intake with these TPU rollers. Um, these TPU rollers have these little uh, hooks on the ends of them so that they can uh, actually kind of like hook on, hook on to the pixel and bring them in better. Um, and then, so we, we, just, we decided to use uh, TPU instead of regular surgical tubing because uh, we thought that it was more precise compared to the surgical tubing since they can be more stiff. And so whenever uh, they go into this front, um, Roller, it also goes onto this uh, counter roller right here that uh, spins counterly to uh, the other rollers. Then they go up onto this intake ramp right here. And then they go into this uh, pixel, they slide into this pixel bucket right here. And um, with that, we have our uh, outtake mechanism that can go in and uh, score. So our outtake mechanism, uh, what, it do what it does, is yeah, it's a um, it has a linear slide that has these um, these TPU rollers on it. So whenever whenever it will go inside the pixels, it will uh, contract and expand inside the wheels to hold them on. And so then, so we go down and then we go out and we can drop one at a time and or and second. And then another unique thing we have on this robot is, are these um, pager motor, motors. These pager motors, what they do, um, they vibrate the, this bucket here. And so with that, uh, we, all we did was have a GoBuilda. So we took a broken GoBuilda servo and we took the uh, servo controller and we wired the pager motors into that server server controller so it's not no um illegal wiring or anything special like that so um it's just to vibrate the pixels to uh get them in the right spot just in case if they are uh that's really interesting and let's talk more about how you decided on 
what slides to use, what ratio do you run them at in order to reach to the third set line and even over the shared backdrop that's at the Chicago Robotics Invitation. Yeah, so we actually changed the gear ratio on our slides. So they're just strong slides. Initially, we used 11150 on it because we were planning on making a separate climb mechanism. But we ended up changing that because we didn't want to uh, go through that. So we just added the climb onto our lift. And so then we switched to a single 312 motor, but that was too slow for us. So we ended up switching to dual 435 RPM motors for the balance between speed and enough strength to lift the robot. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I like how you guys decided to just switch to these two motors in order to make sure that you had the best uh, balance between the two. Finally, let's move on to uh, the very unique drone launcher that you have. It uses a linear rail, so can you talk to me more about how you made that decision in order to launch your drone? Yeah, so originally, uh, throughout the entire season, we've had the uh, Bot Builders Blue Drone Launcher. Um, it really worked out for us um, at Worlds and through all of our competitions. Uh, but with the CRI game and how it modified and how there was the much smaller Zone 1, um, we realized that wasn't going to be efficient for us. And so we noticed uh, a lot of mini drones were being able to do that. And so we um, took inspiration from 11212, the Clueless. They had something similar to this. Uh, but we completely designed our own drone launcher from scratch and um, it's been really helpful for us. We've been able, it just has enough power to get over the wall to where you can hit that zone one 40 point. Um, yeah, and it's been, it's been amazing to have. And uh, next, you guys have a lot of really cool driver enhancements and strategy options. Talk me through how you guys went through that, programmed it, and how you made all of these strategy calls in order to help benefit your alliance. Okay, here we go, Amelia. So within the match, we have implemented these human player drive coach gloves, and that lets me as human player know what pixel to play. So there's no guessing, no shouting across the field. And we've even been able to implement this with our alliance partners so that even though you may have a drive coach whose voice you don't recognize, you can know what pixel to place. And so basically ours uh, has an active intake. So I place like one in front of the other and um, with our gloves here, Whatever uh, glove he puts first, I know to put that in the first position because our robot will drop it on the backdrop like that. So over the years, um, we have realized that uh, the less buttons you have on your controller, the better. Um, and so our lift is run by the triggers. Um, we, are, we do this so we're able to um, uh, move it wherever we need to and to be precise as we physically can. Um, in one button push movement, um, as Andrew can demonstrate with the plunger, um, it plunges down, up, out the back, and into our scoring position. That's all one button press. And if you press it again, it pulls it back once, moves back and forward, and then moves it back again. So that's all on the same button. Um, and then our drone launch is our D-pad up, with fire um, and our intake, outtake, intake. Um, and then we also have the outtake. Um, and then on the driver two, uh, we have the things such as resetting IMU. So we use field centric drive. Um, if our auto ends and we're slightly off, uh, he can we can move to that position. He can reset that. Um, and then if our lift gets above, if our lift ends auto like this, um, and that's the new zero position in Teleop. Our second driver can actually drive it to where it needs to be and reset that as the lift zero. Uh, so we can continue to play the match as well as he also has the ability to agitate the bucket just in case if we need to. Uh, talk to me about the paddles, the manual paddles that you have on your controller. Yeah, so these, uh, these paddles that I have on these controller, that this controller is to um, just help me uh, be faster at driving so I can be strafing and going forward at the same time while I, I can be pressing the intake button or pressing the outtake button, for example. And just help having those buttons in the same area and being able to do press multiple at one time is very, very, very efficient for us. And so this is a mechanical attachment so it can come off with 
uh, two uh, tat little tabs that you undo. Um, and so yeah, they just help us to go faster with our uh, teleop game. Thank you so much for joining us on Behind the Bot. I hope the viewers enjoyed seeing this robot and learn more through its unique, uh, unique parts and design. Thank you for joining us. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. StudiCut Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots.